Mr. Chairman, Hanyo Aseo to, uh, to all of you. I'm very happy to be uh, joining you, unfortunately, digitally from Mumbai in India. Uh, I would have loved to be with you in Korea, of course, but uh, the circumstances are, are unfortunately not helping. Um, as you said, you know, I, I, at Schneider Electric, we are a, a technology company uh, and I'm looking after most of the emerging world where technologies are actually going even faster than in the mature world because I see most of our customers and territories uh, going very fast to the very last mile without doing all the steps before. So uh, our mission at Schneider is really powering digital economy and artificial is a growing part of uh, the technology we deploy. Uh, we have been uh, in automation and in electrification since decades, since uh, more than 50 years. But of course, over the last three decades, the acceleration of our technology and our deployment of technology has been all around digital. So we can move to the next slide. So um, the way we approach digital is that, of course, we have come from a technology that is automation and electrification. And the more we have grown in these technologies, we have discovered the potential of digital for our customers by bringing the applications based on IoT information, both in the electrification world and in the automation world, on the shop floors and on any kind of infrastructure, by exactly the approach that Professor Lee was mentioning on before, which is enabling people. We do not believe at Schneider that automation for the sake of automation is successful. Enabling people is the most successful approach whenever we uh, want to use data as a more powerful tool to achieve the objectives of any kind of infrastructure, any kind of industry. Even if we have this uh, objective today, we are still just at the beginning of the journey in all industries because even though, as you would see on this slide, 23% of our organizations consider that they are working in a collaborative way to, to prepare the future uh, with the interactive and explainable AI-based systems, and 79% of executives believe that their industry is moving towards offering more variety of connected products and services, we estimate at this stage that only 10% of the available data is effectively used today for the purpose of enhancing the mission of, of each of these companies. And that's really what we are working on uh, with, uh, with Schneider Electric and all its partners. And Foxconn is, is one of our partners as well. And I'm very happy to, uh, to be uh, together with Professor Lee today. Uh, we, we are working towards enabling this data to be used in a sense that serves the purpose of each of these companies. We can move to the next slide, and I will illustrate on the next slide what the purpose can be, because using data for the sake of using data is nice, but you know everyone has an economic constraint and, and want to satisfy some business purposes thanks to technology. So here you, what you have is our feedback after a decade or more of using data uh, with applications that are uh, IoT enabled and AI enabled on the various kinds of infrastructure that Schneider is serving. So we are serving any kind of grid, any kind of building, any kind of industry, any kind of, uh, of uh, data storing uh, infrastructure, data center. These are the, the end markets that the technologies of Schneider are serving. On these end markets, we have more than 500,000 sites that are fully equipped today with the Schneider technologies of the EcoStructure platform. Uh, these technologies are relying on, a, of course, what you would find in the shop floor that is connected products that deliver power, motion, metering, things that are necessary to understand what happens in the reality. On, on top of these technologies, you would have what we call edge controlling systems, the real-time automation loops that are enabling to control the infrastructure and to operate safely. And on the top, you would have purely software AI enabled applications, which would be extracting the data from all the layers and providing analytics on top of it. From the deployment of this comprehensive platform, what we gather is on energy efficiency of these infrastructures, 
basically an average saving of 30%. Some cases go up to 85% just because intelligence allows to control better the energy. On productivity, we go up to 75% savings of maintenance cost, thanks to better understanding on when and how maintenance is well defined and optimized by predictive maintenance and analytics that would define when the maintenance needs to occur. Uh, on the CAPEX phase, we also have optimizations thanks to an engineering and a commissioning reduction, which is linked to the better analysis of what are the needs of the customers in the design and the implementation of their infrastructure. The most impressive one and probably the best business case for most of our customers is reliability. Because when you pile up all the benefits that AI is enabling, you end up most of the time by reducing by half the downtime of your infrastructure. And of course, the downtime is super costly because uh, this is exactly the time when everything that you have invested in does not produce. So that one is probably the most uh, visible, uh, immediately visible by most of our customers. And last and certainly not least, particularly in these COVID times, thanks to this application, we do improve safety by at least 25%. And I will come back on an example that shows that uh, on one of our factories. Uh, we can move to the next slide. So I would like to move some, to some examples, starting by a Korean example company called Hunga, one of their very good customers. Uh, it's a machine manufacturer, leading machine manufacturer in Korea. They asked us to help them to uh, uh, enhance the real-time monitoring of, uh, uh, of the data produced by packaging mach machines that they, are, uh, that they are producing, and to enhance the way these machines can be monitored, controlled, and better maintained. So we have uh, applied uh, with them a, an application, AI-enabled application called EcoStructure Augmented Operator Advisor, which is providing to the operator uh, a, a gathering of analytics based on anything that can be collected on the machine, uh, enhanced by the analytics that are, uh, that are provided thanks to uh, sets of data that are represented by a, all the machines that we have been built and deployed in many places. And these analytics enable the operator to be guided on how to intervene and when, and when to detect some preliminary defaults, for example, on a machine, and to work with their own customers to optimize the downtime. So uh, that's one example. We can move to the next slide. We will travel a bit for the next one. So uh, I take you to South America with a uh, the, the number one brand of perfumes and cosmetics in, uh, in Brazil called Casa Granado. Uh, Casa Granado asked us to, uh, to help them to optimize their full digital setup from the shop floor up to the uh, full design and analytics, uh, which is provided by uh, the softwares of our software, industrial software company called Aveva. Uh, and their objective there was to optimize the ability to move the production chain from one type of product to another. So they wanted to increase the versatility of their production chain. So thanks to the full connectivity to the, from the shop floor to the supervision softwares, we have enabled them to increase 10 to 15% their production with the same capa initial capacity. Uh, we can move to the next slide. And, and this one will be my last example. Uh, this is a, a, an example that we have deployed uh, as a doctor, you know, on our own factory. So we, we use our own medicine on ourselves. You know, Schneider has more than 200 factories globally, all of them getting digitized, of course. Uh, and this one is our BATAM factory, which has been uh, recognized as uh, the example given by, by Professor Lee um, uh, as a uh, World Economic Forum uh, lighthouse. Uh, uh, with all the applications of EcoStructure deployed. Uh, and we have even enhanced these applications when COVID times came to be uh, enabling our operators to have smart glasses and avoid to touch any of the components of the, uh, of the production chain to be uh, more efficient and more safe. And thanks to uh, all these deployments, we have, uh, uh, we have reduced uh, by 44% the, the, the machine downtime that we had. 
uh, increase 12% operational efficiency and 17% of re reduction of maintenance cost. So that's examples that are live now, uh, which makes our uh, AI applications uh, not the lab anymore since a long time actually, but now something that is really industrialized and deployed at a wide scale. Uh, I will uh, I will stop here my introduction and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.